No? We're live? Mm -hmm. We're live. Hi, everybody. It's Michelle Stone at the Carrollwood Cultural Center. How are you? We're here today. Um, we're doing some live streaming right now. So um, if you have any questions, if you have any thoughts on, the, on what we're about to show you, please go ahead and put them, uh, type them in and just let me know. Uh, I've got my wonderful um, uh, photographer, videographer, Ozzy over here behind me. Um, so he's gonna, we're gonna do this together. So this is the Black Matters Past, Present, Future show. And we're gonna walk you through the whole thing for those of you who are not able to come to the art reception last Friday. Um, I know that artwork is really much better viewed up close, but I really think it's important for everyone to be able to see all of this artwork because it is a phenomenal show. And you know, it's, um, it's, it's really valuable. And I think that these artists need to be you know, recognized. So this first, first one is called Preach, March, Unite Towards Good Trouble. Um, by Carla Watkins, and it's mixed media, and you can see right here that we've got John Lewis, um, predominantly blue with cascade of purple stars, over the face of John Lewis with a yellow band below with five red purple chickens. Uh, the upper right hand corner is burgundy with nine marks of five scratches, right here. So then we're gonna move on to this next one. This is by Langston. It's called Ghost in the Shell Tone. Um, this is a mixed media on watercolor paper. Um, lots of detail in here. So it says, uh, I do believe that we are connected by the way of heart, mind. Therefore, what comes from the heart, mind, goes to, where am I? Go, <laughs> goes to the heart, mind. And this is why, whether it be music, visual arts, spoken word, we moved at times, we feel a sort of familiarity when we encounter these things, merely because they're returning to the source from whence they've come, back to the heart. So this is Langston's piece. Then we're gonna move on over here to Arnold Swepson. This is um, oil on canvas. This is Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Um, uh, Arnold Swepson, you'll see several of his pieces. He was really inspired to do these pieces um, over COVID last year. And so he has like five different paintings that, um, that you'll see throughout here. So this is one of them. This one is Miss Charity Anderson. Um, this is by Lloyd Liddell. This is oil on hardboard. Um, you can kind of look through and, and see like all the details, all of the life that she has in her experience on her face. We're marching to Zion, beautiful, beautiful Zion. We're marching upward to Zion, the beauty of the beautiful city of God. Life was long and arduous march for Charity Anderson, born into slavery around 1835. Um, her journey began at Bell's Landing on the Alabama River in the southwest Alabama. She was a centenarian when interviewed about her life by WPA in the 1930s. Steeped in African American religious traditions, she answered questions about the adversity of with the refrain, thank the Lord, I was, I is on Zion's march. The adversity in the refrain, oh wait, sorry, um, a reference to the Christian hymn about life's difficulties and the journey to heaven. So um, likely an expression she repeated many, many times. This painting is a part of Unstolen Dignity, a series of oil portraits and narratives about enslaved Americans. So, so this is, um, again, Miss Charity Anderson. So now we're going to move on to uh, Arnold Swepson's prints. Um, this is another one of Arnold's pieces that he did uh, last year um, in oil. So prints, I don't know, back to the 80s. Um, this is actually a piece called Still We Rise by James Van. James Van was one of our roundtable members. and. Um, and it, the, this piece was, you've got the Kinte clock here, um, referring back to the African traditions in the motherland. And then you've got the, the, um, the, the little faces of all the different people. 
um, the, the cloth down here and the straw signifying like the slavery times and everything. And then you've got like, these are CDs from all the, like the jazz music that he's listened to over the years and just, and it signifies like the different broken pieces of, um, of the, the black culture, black life. And then of course the chains on the other side um, signifying slavery, so. And then this one is by Painkiller Cam, um, Cam Parker. It's called Tamika, the Patron Saint of Getting It Done. Um, this piece, along with several others I completed in 2020, were extremely therapeutic for me, is what Cam says. It is so important to reflect the times I'm living through, I'm living in through my art. And Tamika D. Mallory, along with a few other social activists, have been giving me tons of inspiration as of late. The goal is, no matter the message, to stay true to my pop style and express my energy and sass. So this is, um, again, painkiller cam. So Then we've got Maria Ortiz, the storyteller. This is uh, stained glass mosaics. Through oral tradition and oral stories, um, our stories have been passed down through generations. In this village, the elder in the foreground passing um, passing wisdom onto the children sitting under the tree by his favorite stump right here. And then we've got in the background a group of young people gathering to exchange stories over here. Um, even a little baby poised to listen right in here. And then, and then there's a mother telling a story while cooking with her child. This is a very serene setting full of life and stories to be told and heard and told and heard and so it goes. So that's Maria. Maria Ortiz. This one actually won um, honorable mention. Then we've got uh, Tiffany Badamy, The Racism Pandemic. This one, um, she started off in, in uh, June 7th and completed it in September 27th. And all of these names are people from the Black Lives Movement of um, people who had died. The Breonna Taylor, Daniel Prude, um, Stephen Taylor, Manuel Elliot, uh, Manuel Ellis, um, Richard, Richard Brooks, George Floyd. So all of these names here. And so um, Tiffany actually won first place in this piece. And so the, uh, it's, it's just really, really extraordinary piece. Lots and lots of incredible detail. So um, if you are here, if you're on watching us, go ahead and give us a heart. Uh, let us know that you're on so we can see, okay? So, thank you for being here. Um, this one's called uh, Rhythm Kings by Marie Shatt. These are um, a couple of gentlemen that were performing at Bush Gardens, and so this is uh, watercolor. And then this next one, Tony Adams, this one's called Quiet Riot. Um, it's an intuitive piece, uh, it's an intuitive piece that represents to me a person finding solace in a chaotic place. She's tired of taking a breath looking up toward the heavens with feelings of hope and assurance, meditating and transcending to a better place. Sometimes we need to take a minute and the quiet and quiet the riot around us for clarity, peace, and strength. So that's what she's doing. She's looking up for clarity, peace, and strength. Um, this one is called Le Protector by Susie Edo. A uh, French guard at uh, Mont Saint Michel, a uh, part of the French army, though named Troops de Marine, not a political statement, or is it? And then this one is um, this one's called "Where Do We Go From Here?" You can see it's modern day. We've got you know the masks and everything. This is a piece in gouache um, by Marlon Tobias. In the midst of ongoing pandemic. Black people found themselves taken to the streets to continue the fight against black brutality and racial injustice. Um, while the images that dominated our news cycle aimed at capturing the ethos and images of facelessness and amorphous masks, the hodgepodge of human and sink bonded together by their anger and their suffering. I wanted to closely examine parts of this whole Purple hues drape the scene, providing a dual meaning as the signifier for royalty and also indicative of the transformational nature of all things. The young child, right here, gazes at the viewer with aplomb to, bravery, to bravely face their circumstances erect. 
dignified and defiant. All the features are cloaked behind the armor of their masks, some, of, some with dark glasses, both with the protections, both with protection serve as chin shields for the larger looming threats of rampaging viral infection, the racial retaliation, and none, less the, and none the less no subject shrinks for their circumstances, which Don Lamont astutely calls two deadly viruses that are killing America's COVID-19 and racism 20. All right. So that's it so far. Um, that's just one wall. So as you can tell, there's a lot of different pieces. We've got 50 different pieces by 27 different artists here at the Carroll Cultural Center right now. So we are going over to um, the next side. And then we also have upstairs too. So I don't know if you got to see that as you're walking across with, with Ozzy. So. Um, any questions yet, Ozzy? Uh, people just talking to each other in the chat. Everything's good so far. Awesome. Good, good, good. So this one is a Jennifer How to Show. Um, this one's called Shine. A child with images of various generations of her family surrounding her, her heritage. So that's this particular piece. This is a uh, acrylic oils. So um, this one is also a piece by Maria Ortiz Haynes, Queen for a Day. This is a really interesting story. Um, she steps out in all of her glory to be part of the quadroon ball, which history tells apart from tells us was a part of the culture in New Orleans in the late 19th and early 20th century for Negro women. Um, they were anxious to celebrate their beauty through their uh, elaborate costumes, mostly to be paraded before a wealthy white gentleman looking for a walk on the dark side. There were also many subjects to what is called the brown paper bag test. The brown paper bag test is when in African American oral history was a form of racial indiscrim or, yeah, indiscrimination practiced with African American community. By comparing the individual's skin tone to the color of a brown paper bag. So um, this test was allegedly used as a way to determine whether or not the individual could have certain privileges such as participating in the quadroon ball. Only those with a skin color that matched or was lighter than the brown paper bag were allowed of admission or membership to these balls. She will soon get back to her daily life and the image will be shattered just as the glass was shattered. But for today, she's queen for a day. So this one is um, by Pat Mitchell. It's called Old Rascal. This one won honorable mention as well. Um, colorful attire. The mischievous twinkle in the eyes of the slight and the slight smile at the playful personality of this gentleman. And I don't know if you can see it there, but he's got fish in his jacket. So you can tell he's, he's kind of a comedian. He's really funny. Um, I was talking to Pat about this particular piece and he was saying that, that that guy really, that was his overall personality. So I love that he was able to capture that and bring it through with this watercolor. This one is, this piece is by Picasso Snow. It's called, The Crown That Means Nothing, uh, That Crown Means Nothing Without a Foundation. Um, crowns re represent power, victory, triumph, and honor, but stand for nothing without foundation. We must raise our young kings and queens to be strong in faith, fearless in the world, and confident in their ability to lead in the future. So that's this particular piece. So this one is by McLeano Priestley. Um, it's called Bridgerton Sista. Um, if you'll notice, like all of the lines that appear to be lines, these are all words. This is called uh, micography with India ink, acrylic, and a glaze. And so each one of these, Ozzy, when I leave, I don't know if you can kind of come up on it, but these are all different phrases. So as you're kind of going, yeah, like go down and see. So um, yeah, just incredible work. And so it says, uh, when storylines create inclusion, honoring beauty and sophistication from all walks of life, I was completely enthralled with Bridgerton. Inclusion in storytelling matters as does the world of the arts. A simple figurative line drawing in micography with corn braids up here, um, the braids I was taught to braid on myself and my daughters. The braids that my ancestors wore, the braids that told the map of the Underground Railroad, 
the braids that we wear in the island of Cabo Verde. These little moments on the global platform matter. Our beauty, our inclusion, and our sophistication matters. So this is um, Muhammad Ali by Arnold Swepson. This is also an oil painting, um, one of the ones that uh, Arnold Swepson did uh, last year during the pandemic. This one is oil on hardboard. It's called Miss Mary Bryce by Lloyd Liddell. Um, her picture, the face of slavery, and, and at the inaptly named point of honor in Lynchburg, Virginia. She represents generations of African Americans who labored in bondage at, their, at the historic estate, now a museum and inspiration for the controversial Amazon series of, by the same name. Mary Bryce, appears to be middle-aged with a no-nonsense glaze in the 1953 Degretarian ref, um, reference photograph for this painting. Her natty appearance may indicate that she worked inside the home. George Cobble, a doctor and a friend of Thomas Jefferson, built a two-story federal-style mansion on 856 acres in 1806. After, the, after his death in 1923, the estate changed hands several times. Listed on the National Registry of Historic Places, it became a museum in 1978. This painting is part of the Unstolen Dignity, a series of oil portraits and narratives about enslaved Americans. So this is Miss Mary Bryce. And then we're gonna come on over here. Um, Dakota Mathis, A Walk from the Past. This one also won an honorable mention award. Um, walking from the past starts as you enter the tunnel and then you pass through referencing and graffiti to, to a mark to mark time before you get to the light of the to the yeah, the light of the light of the future and so if you'll notice over here we've got Harriet Tubman hope love faith we've got the KKK um, and Dwight silence black justice and then all it goes all the way up through and then the last quote says isn't broken but simply unfinished by Amanda Gorman, which she quoted on January 20th at the inauguration. So this one is um, Artist Jones. It's mixed media, um, acrylic, and some other things. Um, it's called Mammogram um, God of Lightning. The inspiration from the painting comes from a painting called Thunderman that lived in my home since I was younger. My dad got it well traveling in Australia. I always had a curiosity about who he was. I thought he was an aboriginal god of thunder. Then I learned that Mammogram was the aboriginal god of lightning. Um, there were barely any depictions of him outside the old comic book, so I had a little fun with what I thought he could look like. Mammogram is the aboriginal god of lightning who lives in a puddle, rises a cloud, and throws lightning. As as this is his nature, I didn't want to depict him as angry, but instead calm. He exists not out of punishment, but because he simply just is. So, any thoughts, questions, anything so far? Mm. No, just comments? Yeah. People just saying congratulations stuff? All right, so we've got Maria Ortiz Hayes. This is um, Sax. Sax is his name. Like you and me, especially as a black man, he has to um, face life's ups and downs. The different and more troubling trials of a black man's face, uh, wait, that a black man faces every day has become commonplace. Long ago, sax became an extension of his instrument. He plays his saxophone and transports him to a place outside the, of time and, and circumstance. Its melodies arrive before he does. He wouldn't have it any other way. His own personality shines through the bling bling he wears on his fingers. Um, his music resonates and takes his listener on a journey through Sax's world. At times, his notes can shatter glass, the glass that holds him and shines a light on him. Even now, can you hear the sweet sound? Don't you want to? Play it, Sax, play on. Um, so this one is Celeste Salgado. Uh, it's called Ruby, and this one's mixed media. Um, oil pastels, uh, pastel core paint, and acrylic make up this unique palette of brown colors on the face of Ruby, the dancer. She was inspired to paint Ruby 
with sand and determined eyes. So that's that. So this one is by Sean Rainey. He's also known as Fabstract. Um, the struggles from rising from a black artist to an artist. So, and it's called Heavy as the Art Crown. So, yeah. So now we're going on to Arnold Swepson. This is Barack Obama. Um, I think he's got a couple more upstairs. So this is um, another oil and canvas piece that he did over 2020. And then we've got Tony Adams. This one's called Yellow Light. Um, it's an intuitive painting which represents hope or finding, finding a way out. Essentially, originally painted without the yellow stripe, I could feel the pain and see its struggle, its stress, its perseverance, and its strength. It was a, in a dark place and was lost. We have all been there at some point. I wanted to know, I wanted it to know that it was not alone and, and give it a way out. So intuitively, I gave it a yellow stripe right here, um, which represents the way out. Without it, I can imagine losing the figure completely. So that's that. We're gonna go over here and do a couple of sculptures. Let's do this one first. This one is by Rebecca Skelton. Um, I do have an interview for her as she was talking about how she actually had this vision um, maybe like a month and a half ago. And this is typically not her, her uh, type of sculpture, but she had this vision and so she had to create it and then she saw the show. And so she put this together. It's called Dark Foundation of Southern Heritage. Um, mixed medium material, fabric, lace beads, found object, that type of thing. The Southern uh, bell dress floats over the corroded column, supported and suppressing black faces drawn on the rocks. And so, just so you know, if, um, if someone chooses to purchase this, which is $350, 50% of this will go to the Carter G. Woodson Museum of African American Art Culture. So that's just so you know. Up here I have, Ozzy, can you come in and look at it? I have the Negro Motorist Green Book. So this was actually a loan to us by James Van. Um, this is a pretty much brand new, and um, he and his dad used to use it when they traveled um, before segregation. So there's that. And then this particular piece is by David Mack. Um, it's dedicated to, it's called George Floyd, uh, inspired by the death of George Floyd in 2020. This piece was thrown, stoneware clay, hand sculpted, detachable um, from thigh. So, uh, yeah, David's piece, he, he, um, he created that, you know, in his own home studio. So, we're going to go over here. And just so you know, all, the majority of this artwork is for sale. Um, so, if you are inspired by any of it, um, please feel free to reach out to me at curator at carowoodcenter.org or um yeah and and i'd be happy to reach out you know and also if you're interested in looking at any of this art please again curator at at uh, carolwoodcenter.org because um the this artwork is up until the 27th so we've got the rest of this week we've got tomorrow from 9 to 6 and then saturday from 9 to 12 and then next week uh, monday and tuesday are 9 to 9 and Wednesday, Thursday, Friday are again 9 to 6, and then Saturday is 9 to 2, so 9 to 12, sorry. So this one's called Simplicity. Um, it's a plaster sculpture. Plaster sculpture. It's by uh, Maria Mitchell, um, created using a clay mold and, and cast plaster. The abstract sculpture has a smooth texture, and the shapes and forms are simplified. This one is called um, Ebony Woman. This one is a bronze sculpture. This one also won third place um, for the judging. The sculpture was created by the use of historical lost wax process. Lost wax process. Um, the basic torso of a woman in a semi-abstract style influenced by artist uh, Elizabeth Otlet. So we're actually gonna go back over here so I know that we came this way, but we're gonna go back over here. So anyway, do you have any questions? Does anyone have any thoughts or anything? What do you see, Ozzy? People saying someone Tiffany said Quiet Riot is the favorite in her whole in the whole gallery. Woo -hoo! 
What else? It's people congratulating her. People were surprised at the needle point. There's just a lot of people just communicating about it. Awesome. All right. So this one is um, this one's called Honoring Casey. It's mixed media. This one is um, actually my piece, and it's it's uh, probably one of the darkest pieces in the show. Um, I've been teaching for over 20 years, teaching kids, and one of my very first students was killed to um, in, in Columbus, Ohio. <laughs> it's a little emotional for me. Um, and this is the picture that I've had at my house since he was like four or five. Anyway, um, so he was walking into his grandmother's house and um, had some kind of a conversation with a cop who was following him and the cop shot him five times from the back. And so, and he fell into his grandmother's kitchen. And so that's what this represents and the toys and everything. So that's that. All right, we're gonna head upstairs. So we will be back in just a minute. So, uh, all right. Hello again, we are upstairs, still at the Black Matters Past, Present, Future exhibit. So this piece is by Ron Ronstadt Simmons. Um, it's called Soul Power. Um, wearing a gas mask that symbolizes resilience and perseverance, the young child in this image flexes to the showcase to showcase her inner strength during challenging times. So that piece is made out of um, acrylic and spray. And then we've got this piece by David Khalil. It's called My, My Baby's Treats. It's actually made out of sand. So everything that you see here is just all sand. Um, it's one of my favorite subjects. I spent a lot of time to blend the color and get, the, get it right. The color coherence shows the beauty of the ins uh, inspirational baby's treat. So that's that. And then this one is by Celeste Salgado, Family First. Sticking together and having each other's back through adversity is the hallmark of this African-American family. The trio of sister and brothers remind us to put our family first. This is a mixed media painting which provides unique color, a unique color palette. So, um, mixed media, yeah. This one is the third one by L Lloyd Liddell. It's called Mr. Little Liverpool Hazard. It's also oil on cardboard. Um, Liverpool Hazard was eight when the largest slave auction in the United States history split his enslaved community, uh, leaving some families intact while separating others and ripping connections built over generations. Um, in 1859, the auction sold off 436 enslaved men, women, and children from the Butler family farm on Butler Island in southeast Georgia near Darien. The slaveholder Pierce Meese Butler, grandson of Pierce Butler, a signee of the United States Constitution, ran into financial trouble and was forced to sell half of the people he held in bondage. Enslaved people on the Butler's farm had limited experiences with forced family separation, unlike enslaved people on other southern plantations Historian and author Ailey, uh, Ann C. Bailey said in a 2017 Cambridge University Press interview. They were a really tight-knit community, said Bailey, author of the book, The Weeping Time, Memory, Memory and, the, and the Largest Slave Auction in American History. They had strong African traditions and they were really close. Mr. Hazard was believed to be the one, of the one last survivor of the Butler Plantation when he died in 1937. He was known to pass on folklore about the farm and the enslaved people on Butler Island. Known as Gullah or Geechee, they are descendants of slave, enslaved West Africans from low country off the coast of South Carolina and Georgia. The Gullah was developed Wait, the Gullah developed a distinct Creole language and culture influenced by West African tradition. The Gullah culture persists today. It is celebrated as a symbol of cultural pride and resilience. This painting is part of the Unstolen Dignity series, um, a series of oral portraits and narratives about enslaved African Americans. So that's Hazard Liverpool. 
So this one is by Nolan Anderson. It's called Voodoo and the Vibes. This, this whole painting is all oil. Um, often I paint the elements of nature in my work as intangible but genuine forces that come from within or around us. In this case, the butterflies represent the creative power within all of us. They're coming from the horn player and then creating the little girl who is play, playing the tambourine, which in turn brings forth the butterfly, the creative force, um, that is turned into the hornsman, bringing everything full circle. I do believe that we are all connected by a way of heart and mind. Therefore, what comes from the heart and the mind um, goes to the heart and the mind. And that's why, and this, oh wait, and this is why whether it be music, visual arts, spoken word, we are moved at times to feel a sort of familiarity when we encounter these things, merely because they're returning to the source from whence they've come. Back to the heart. So that's Nolan Anderson's piece. Um, then here we've got Graffiti Egypt with a piece called Rising Sun. It's acrylic. Throughout my work, I use portraiture and storytelling. The subject is accompanied by a vibrant background, which is used to amplify the image and gain the viewer's attention. In this piece, I chose to tell a story of a young warrior from the Rendo tribe located in northern Kenya desert. Um, his headdress is made up of feathers as a representation of becoming a warrior and fulfilling his role of protecting the livestock in their village. These young men intimately know the land and as if they were born to navigate it. With each morning, he awaits from the rising sun to begin his daily task. So that was a um, full acrylic. And then we've got Pat Mitchell. This one's called Shooting Range. Um, it's also a watercolor. Uh, the image rendered from a narrative realism style depicts the very common and sometimes volatile environment of people of color, particularly young black men. The birds in red ribbon reflect the fragile and fleeting life force in the urban environment. So, so that's that, the birds right here. Careful behind you. All right, this one is um, called The Starting Five 2021. It's by Picasso Snow. And it's also acrylic. Um, this painting was inspired by trailblazing black women who have paved the way for themselves, fueling younger generations to live with their purpose. Success comes in all shapes and sizes, and I wanted to reflect influential women that were first in their industries. Oprah Winfrey was the first of many things from anchoring uh, news stations to producing her own talk show to becoming a multi-billionaire. Macy Jensen, an engineer and first black woman to travel space. Um, and where am I? Shirley Chrisom, the first black woman in Congress right here, and the first woman to speak, wait, to seek nomination for the President of the United States. And then we've got the First Lady of the United States and Ms. Cheryl Swoops, the first woman to be signed onto a WNBA and have a signature uh, athletic shoe. So that's that. And then our last one, this is by Arnold Swepson. I believe this is the complete of the five. Um, this is Rosa Parks. One of his uh, one of his oil pieces that he did in 2020. So, any thoughts, questions? No, nothing. All right. So we're gonna come on over here. I've got a a corridor full of more art here. Um, this is actually uh, Ray Pelliquin. So Ray has um, cerebral palsy, and he actually paints with a head apparatus. So you can see right there in the picture there. And so all of these paintings are done with his head apparatus, so. And we got some on this side too. Yep. All right. And so now we're gonna go in here. And this is the last bit of our show. So um, we can, yeah, we can start right here. So this is Elisheva Abibi, um, Private Supervision. So this particular piece, um, it's mixed media, and the, I'm trying to remember this, this is, yeah. I don't know the whole story, and it's, da, 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 da. Being said, uh, 
Testing my abilities. So it's basically her having a conversation with God and talking about her abilities in the process of what um, believing in herself and, and the process of creating art for herself. So, all right. Then we've got um, Pat Mitchell. This is the third of his pieces. Um, also watercolor. It's called Florida Cowboy. Uh, contemporary cowboy in a Florida setting, lots of space and plenty of moss laden oak trees. So lots of detail in that one. Sean Rainey, um, you saw his piece downstairs, the one about the uh, heavy as the art crown. So this is his second piece, Matandia. Uh, um, he also goes by Fabstract. Um, this is uh, created with acrylic paint, a transformation, transformative change of heart from religion to spiritual conversation. And then we've got these two uh, by Anasia Smith, a Black Woman's Fury, and a Black Man's Fury. Um, the the dis one description basically gives both of them, um, describes both of them. This, they're both acrylic. Um, America has, has always been an unusual place for Black people. Imagine being brought to an unfamiliar place, stripped of your language, of your culture, and tortured mentally and physically for centuries to come. Imagine being stripped of who you truly are, then forced to assimilate, and yet still bear the burden of your ancestors in modern day. Uh, to be black in this country and relatively conscious is to be enraged almost all of the time. It is a stage of rage that no words could possibly explain. A type of pain that society won't even let you express. A pain that everyone shamefully and silently is aware of but only you as a black person feel a pain, a rage. You must hide it as if it does not exist. It is a generational trauma, agony, savagely cruel, that the red, white, and blue, it is America. It is a black woman's and a black man's fury. So then we have um, Aisha Oxidine. Uh, this one is called The Moment of Time. In my painting, I have four different yet similar civil rights activists that each had their moment in time to make an, a change in this wild and twisted country that we live in. We've got Angela Davis, President Barack Obama, um, Madam Vice President Kamala Harris, and Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. So this one is um, created out of acrylic. Then here we have, um, we can do this one. This one is Beth Gurley, Sabrina Collins, Chemist Tribute. This is mixed media. Sabrina was an African-American scientist who didn't, who couldn't make a contribution, who didn't think that she could make a contribution to science because she didn't see any other African-American chemists. And then we've got this one, David Galil, Black Beauty. This detailed mosaic work to show the beauty of blacks. Uh, you may also enjoy looking at the beautiful eye and you may notice the eyelashes were cut out of one piece. So. Also the same beautiful lips, and so this um, mosaic is, is on plywood. And then we've got two more. Celeste Salgado, woman of color. Um, this one is mixed media, and as a, she's a woman, a woman of color, complex, confident in her many hues. She is peaceful, resilient, spiritual, and relevant. She desires to be seen in her many hues, for she is every woman. When you mix all of the colors together, you get brown. Mixed media, pastel, acrylic, and poor paint. And then finally, this one is Arnold Swenson's um, metal sculpture. Uh, Arnold had an uncle who was a Tuskegee Airman, and so this is a tribute to his uncle. It's made out of, um, this is chicken wire, and then inside this is um, a diff another type of wire, but it's, uh, it's, we have him up here because he's overlooking the entire gallery and he's saluting everything that's happening. So I thank you for being here, for being part of this live stream. Um, I appreciate all of the artists who have been part of this and for sharing their artwork with us. I think that it's really important to continue having this conversation. And if you have any questions for me, please feel free to reach out to me at Carolwood, at um, curator at carolwoodcenter.org. And for more information about upcoming shows, also that would be the same email that you would put out to. Uh, the show is ending um, next Saturday, not two days from now, but next Saturday. So please come, please see it. It's much better in person. 
but I do know that there are many people out there that wanted to see it. And so I thank you very much. Ozzy, do you have any questions, any thoughts? Uh, no, but Tiffany said thank you. You're welcome, Tiffany. Thank you.